recording this. Okay. So I would like to welcome everyone uh, to our um, last lecture of our 41st annual lecture series in art and archaeology of Turkey, which is co-sponsored with the Turkish American Association. Uh, normally, we would hold these lectures at the Reşat Aktan Lecture Hall at the Turkish American Association, um, which we are missing very much. <coughs> and I do hope we can get back to it um, very soon. Uh, um, so I will ask you all to um, turn off your sounds, your audio, when the lecture starts. And if you like, you can turn off your video as well. Um, that's good for saving some bandwidth. Um, and if you have questions and answers, you can either put it in the chat or after the lecture, you can raise your hands um, and we can have a more uh, comfortable environment in which we can discuss and ask questions to our um, speaker. So it is my great um, honor and privilege to introduce uh, Bill Geher Müzlü Kortholt, uh, who is joining us from Esparta, and I do hope eventually she will come back to Ankara and give us another lecture in person so that we can um, celebrate the lectures as we usually do uh, with libations and uh, food afterwards. Um, but in the meantime, we're really happy. <laughs> oh yeah, Julian, thank you. <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, I'm actually really grateful that this opportunity of the world in Zoom can join a whole bunch of us from all over the world uh, together. Um, Bilge Hürmüzlü uh, received her BA, MA, and PhD from the Classical Archaeology program at Ege University. Her PhD focused on Klazomenai Akpınar necropolis from 7th to 4th century BC and um, focused on Ionian uh, burial practices. And this is something I may have to um, drag her back to talk to us again at some point. A uh, very interesting um, topic. Um, she's been teaching at Esparta at Süleyman Demiral University in the archaeology program since 1994. And since 2016, she's been a professor there. Um, she received many awards uh, and fellowships. Uh, I will not list all of them, not all of them here. But uh, she had a long-term uh, postdoctoral Humboldt uh, Research Fellowship, uh, which is extremely prestigious. Uh, she also has a research fellowship from Eret, which is also important for us. Um, for me too. She's worked for many seasons at Klazomenai uh, excavations uh, um, on the Aegean coast near Urla uh, with uh, Professor Guvan Bakır. She's also worked uh, in the regional surveys of the area um, uh, for several seasons. Uh, she's participated in uh, numerous projects, um, including the Miletus excavations and Kios Katofana excavations. Um, but um, she's been working in the area of Sparta since 2000, uh, where she conducted a um, regional survey uh, from 2008 to 2019. And then at Seleukia Sidera, excavation started in 2017, I guess with collaboration um, with the uh, museum. And then uh, since 2019, uh, she's been uh, directing the excavations there. Um, so she will, um, oh, she also has a very interesting project uh, I'm curious about. Um, she started, um, she initiated an intangible heritage project on Esparta. Uh, so she's been collecting a lot of information in the, um, I guess, uh, a lot of history and uh, culture of the area. So maybe we can um, talk about that later as well. It sounds very interesting. So tonight, she will talk to us about um, her research at Seleukia Sidera 
in her lecture entitled Historical Landscape of Seleucia Sidera and its Environment. So thank you for this opportunity and I will let you take over. Thank you very much, uh, dear Elif. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to talk to you all today and to give a lecture for Ari. Um, I'm very excited. Usually I do this very, very often, but today I'm very uh, excited. So please forgive me if my in language will not help a lot. Um, okay, now can you see my uh, slides oh. or uh, no? It's it's uh, she yani son iki slide da gösteriyor. Ha öyle mi? Tamam. O zaman şöyle yapacağız. Bir dakika. Şöyle yapacağız. Şimdi nasıl? Ha, okay. All good. Tamam. Oldu mu? Is it okay now? It's it's great. It's fine. Okay. So today I will be uh, presenting you a new actually fairly new project uh, in Pisidia, uh, where uh, we, uh, like Elif just mentioned, we started in uh, 2017 with the Sparta Museum. Uh, but I would like to also give you some other background information and sometimes combine it with our survey uh, project we conducted for uh, more than 10 years that also brings important information to understand the region. As you all know, Pisidia is the lands and includes Lake Burdur, Eridir, and Beşehir, and, uh, and the neighbors, the city of Antalya, at southwest of Turkey. So today's modern, um, modern um, Göller uh, Bölgesi in uh, in Turkish. Uh, Sereke Sidera is located uh, north of Sagalassos, south of Apollonia, and it is very close uh, to other many cities known in the region like Prostana and Konana. From Sparta, it is very close. It's just like 30, 40 minutes away from Sparta, and it's in its uh, Atabe, uh, Atabe, um, district uh, of uh, modern Sparta. Um, I, I cannot remove my slides. <laughs> um, the research in the region is actually not new. So the region I'm, I'd like to talk about is this, uh, it is, it's involved this red circle, mainly Seleucia and its environment. And a little bit, I will also deal with Konana. Uh, both were uh, localized by Hirschfeld already in 1874, but uh, some attempt of uh, mapping of the area was already done by Kippard in uh, 1898 and, uh, and uh, 1902, which is also gives us very important information, for, especially for the topography of the area. Later on, there are a lot of surveys which are still uh, go, uh, continuing, uh, epigraphical surveys, uh, started with uh, Buckler's and his, his friends in 1930s and still going on uh, with the many colleagues are still working in the region. Uh, so you see, you see the uh, research uh, have been done in the, in the region and, and I just don't want to go e uh, off each of them, but like just Elif uh, mentioned, we uh, conducted a very long term of survey in the region, both in, uh, in uh, Konana, Seleukia, Timandos, and Apollonia. And in last years, we started to concentrate on Seleukia itself and its environment. And since uh, 2019, uh, the excavation is going on under uh, Suleiman Demiral University with collaboration of international and interdisciplinary uh, teams. Ancient writers are uh, very rarely speaking of uh, Seleucia. So like just Shakespeare uh, codes, what is in a name, Seleucia has also changed this name through centuries. Um, I also listed the names that uh, are known to us uh, of Seleucia. And uh, actually Ptolemaeus uh, mentions Seleucia Pisidia as being in Phrygian Pisidia. 
together with other uh, settlements of, of Pisidia, like Antiochia, Konana, Baris, Lisiana, and Kormasa. But does this suggest how strongly Seleucia and its Eastern districts were influenced by the Phrygian culture? Were they Phrygian in origin rather than belonging to any of other tribes of Pisidia? Was this region settled by Phrygians and maybe later by Lydians or locals, whatever locals is? And uh, of course, later on with Macedonians and, and, and others. So actually Pisidia is a, a true crossroads of culture. Cultures the region may have uh, retained for centuries an eclectic imprint uh, that derived from encounter between indigenous and non-local groups. So I will, uh, I hope we, uh, I will be a little bit uh, talking about that today as well. Uh, before I go in detail about Seleucia itself, uh, maybe a brief historical background about what we know from our region will be uh, giving an idea for the history of Seleucia and its uh, location. This map is uh, trying to show the Palolithic settlements in southwest Anatolia. So the very uh, important or very, very well known settlements of, um, in Antalya region. And uh, adding to those, in, uh, thanks to last uh, surveys uh, of uh, Burdur team, uh, Ralph Bex and his team, here it's in um, Gelandos, in, this, in a district of um, Sparta, and another one here in Kujabash, close to Burdur, there are also new, um, uh, new uh, Paleolithic settlements. Uh, <coughs> To our uh, settlement, to, to Seleucia and Sidera, there are two, one of them, Kapolein, is very close, like it's in the, re, in the territory directly of Seleucia, and Baladus will be the, the, the territorium of Konana, which is also not very far from Seleucia. So we can, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Louis in uh, 1937, in his re research in Baladus and Shevket as his council, in 1944, his research and uh, short excavations in Kapolein uh, cave uh, brought an upper Paleolithic period uh, settlement. So Bolodas, uh, according to him, was an open air site, whereas uh, uh, Kapolein is uh, is in the in the cave. But how this um, region affected from Neolith Neolithic uh, period, or how it became an, uh, it welcomed the ne Neolithization process. Um, actually, not a lot known about what uh, uh, about how ha how this old procedure has happened. Uh, this is partly because of the lack of the research, but Refik Duru, Professor Refik Duru, who uh, who has been working in Burdur and its environment for since a very long time, suggests that Neolithic settlements of the lakes region for many years state that this region had a connection with the Mediterranean region coastal zone during the Neolithization process. The, uh, it is known that the cl uh, climatic conditions in the Anatolian plateau got warmer during the period when Paleolithic age was over. Accordingly, it is assess uh, asserted that in Antalya region, which offers conditions suitable uh, for uh, forager low uh, lifestyle, but insuitable for agriculture. So this region was uh, gradually started to be abandoned or uh, and, migra and people migrated to higher plains in the north of Taurus mountains. So most likely the region uh, was, uh, our region was also like uh, Refik Duru uh, claims, uh, affected by these um, changes, climate changes. However, um, very close to Seleucia Sidera, there are several uh, hooks around it. And uh, the surveys of Mehmet Öseit, or our surveys, uh, which are actually very, uh, very briefly uh, dealing with hooks, I have to say, and sometimes unfortunate illegal excavations, provide us with the uh, date of uh, these hooks or uh, the prehistoric period of, um, of the region. So uh, mainly actually the uh, Bronze Age, uh, early Bronze Age II is very determined in this, in this area. 
maybe this will change the, uh, if uh, the research starts to be intensive in this period. So there, none of them are excavated uh, in a regular way. This is also should be also taken in my in uh, consideration when we claim that they are uh, mainly only um, middle bronze age, uh, early bronze age too. I'd like to take your attention to this to this blue uh, area which um, is actually no any hooks or no other um, settlements are um, identified. Not in our surveys, not in uh, Mehmet Ossait surveys who they lasted almost 40 years in the region. Uh, an ongoing project with the Suleyman Demirel University Anatolia Quaternary Research Center brings actually important evidences for understanding the topography and the clim and climate of the re of this region. Uh, today, I'm I'm very excited about this project. That's that's why I like to share with you the preliminary uh, results. But they are, please keep in mind, they are really preliminary. And this is a project we started. Uh, in last two years, and we will be continuing, especially this year, with uh, drilling more in the area to understand uh, the the questions that even brought, uh, we have more now. Uh, the pro this this first result shows that uh, actually there are uh, three core three core uh, coring have been made in three uh, different points. Uh, near to Kule uh, Önü, so here between uh, here actually between Kızılayuk and, and our settlement, uh, they brought uh, two two lakes, well two different period lakes. One of them is Pleistocene and the Holocene period. Most likely, further analysis, however, and the coring in different areas uh, will also allow us to identify the Holocene uh, period lake in much precise way. I'm very thankful to Dr. Cetin Shankul and, Shankul and his team for this information and a very fruitful collaborations. Uh, one of the preliminary results of their research shows that the area was affected by the eruptions of Gölçük volcanism here. Uh, how this uh, functioned and how this affected our uh, settlement it needs to be still to investigate it. The, the graph here, if you, I don't know if you can see it, shows that uh, the, uh, shows the, the micro XRF data results. Uh, it's a, a lacustrian area that has dried up from time to time from 50,000 before present. According to this micro uh, XRF analysis, the XRF data, the most significant change in Palakuleun Lake uh, occurred at 28,000 before present. The section on the left here uh, shows Palekuleunu preserved biogenic shells in the sediments of the lake. These fossil living remains are proof of the existence of Lake Kuleunu. But how and what quality did the water had? This is something that we still need to investigate. And we hope to uh, take more um, samples and, and do more drill, drills for, uh, the, um, uh, for the analysis of this in the future. Since it's very important and very close to our, um, important to understand its uh, effect on Selevkea Sidera. However, lakeshore settlements are uh, already known in lake region. Ralph Becks uh, 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 refers to lakeshore settlements that are not very common in the other regions of Anatolia, and they can be regarded as a characteristic settlement form of lake district. He uh, refers to 37 lakeshore and nine, set uh, nine settlements uh, as an island in this region in his list in 2013. So we could maybe add more to his, uh, uh, more from our region to uh, in, uh, because of Palakuleun uh, Lake. These lakes, including ours, 
are rather shallow and only slight changes in the water level immediately affect their surface size. Paleogeographical research on several lakes in the Lake District has revealed a continuous decline of the water levels since the last uh, ice uh, age. I just uh, gave you a, a citat from um, Ralph Bex in his publication in 2013. But today, the region seems like this, and this is where actually the blue spot is or the lake was. I will come back to this with our intangible cultural heritage uh, pro uh, project uh, in, uh, at the end once more. So if we continue uh, with the historical um, frame, what happened in Pisidia during Iron Age is becoming even more puzzling. We know a lot of settlements. This is a map of uh, Mehmet Össeit who uh, did his surveys and this is from 2010. So you can add more points even to those from, uh, uh, from that period. Uh, thanks to uh, Mitchell and uh, Lutwanga put surveys in Panamantejos where you see some uh, pottery from uh, their surveys or uh, Uylupunar, um, excavations in uh, Burdur in 1967 uh, or uh, some museum excavations of Sparta in 2008 in some, in some tumuli. So there are settlements, tumuli, and some others are uh, more uh, stelae. So the, the patchy information actually when they come together show that actually the, 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 the Pisidia region was densely um, uh, settled during Iron Age. Especially we, uh, the pottery that we is known to us tells us that from eighth century onwards, there was a, a, a heap uh, 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 settlements in the, uh, in, the, in the area on top of the, of the hills and a lot of uh, tumuli were made. When we come to our region back, we see the same picture. So the blue um, triangle points are uh, showing the uh, only Iron Age uh, settlements. And the green ones are both Iron Age and Hellenistic period. What we know from Seleucia Sidera, the pottery of this, uh, of this uh, period from the top of the hill are uh, definitely from 8th century BC onwards. And there are some, uh, uh, some from some of the hooks that are close to the area, also uh, black and red pottery, banded wares, and some others that uh, figured examples that you, we, we would uh, also um, re recall them from, uh, from, uh, from West uh, Anatolia. But uh, the Hellenistic period in our region, or very close to our region from the Hooks, are almost disappearing. Uh, we don't recall any uh, Hellenistic or intensive uh, Hellenistic settlements on this Hooks. If this is an effect of uh, the Sinoikismos of Seleucid colonies policy, this is a question that I, I like to bring and uh, it needs to be uh, proved by actually uh, intensively served uh, Hayuks. But it seems to me that these uh, Hayuks were uh, very much affected from Seleucid um, uh, po policy of bringing the people together to one side during the Hellenistic period. Seleucia uh, Sidera is one of the uh, four uh, Seleucid colonies known to us in Pisidia. As you know, there are four in Pisidia only. Antioch in Pisidia is one of them, Neapolis. Uh, uh, so Neapolis and Antioch are the, the, the east, uh, eastern uh, colonies and in, at the west side of the, of the region. Uh, at north is Apollonia and then uh, south to that, uh, Seleucia was um, uh, colonized. <coughs> but when uh, is Seleucia founded? Uh, during the Seleucid colony, uh, Seleucid period is a puzzling question. Actually, Cohen uh, refers to uh, the death of Seleucus I after seven months uh, after he took the region 
And that's why, that's why he uh, always refers to the colonies that were um, founded in Antiochus I. Uh, and he's in the opinion of that it, it, its foundation, their foundation was in Antiochus I um, re region. <laughs> A survey that we conducted in Seleuke, uh, around Seleukia itself and in Konana here, Kaletepe, and you can see uh, Konana also from Seleukia. In open air or in clear air, you can even see the, 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 the castle itself from Seleukia, or vice versa. If you stand there in Konana, you can see it with, uh, with uh, just by looking if it's a clear air. So, uh, there are uh, our surveys or Mehmet Öse's surveys uh, all together uh, revealed the presence of smaller scale settlements uh, and some of which date back to earlier periods like to Iron Age, most of them. Um, uh, and uh, the characteristic uh, recalls, the, recalls Mitchell's um, settlement hierarchy. So he, when he uh, refers to there were uh, in Pisidia, uh, settlements like Sagalassos and the others that were already known in the ancient sources, uh, starting from uh, from the arrival of the Macedonians already before, and they were mentioned. So these big cities, and then these colonies, colony settlements, and other others that are maybe smaller than them, uh, less uh, population, like Kaletepe, Konana. Uh, uh, fortified uh, settlements, which you see here, a uh, very uh, impressive gate and, and uh, city wall. Uh, and then much smaller size ones like Gunekant. Actually, this is a picture that we can see in uh, Hellenistic period in, in many regions, right? So this is also uh, uh, remi uh, another example of these Hellenistic period settlements. What we know from Seleukia itself as monuments or buildings, as being as a very young excavation actually, uh, very much is uh, going back to 1993 excavations. That was a very long excavation period, one year but six months, and they opened many trenches and a lot of uh, buildings or structures came to light. So um, it is our program, uh, or our duty as well to start to try to combine the old excavation archive, which is given to us uh, from Orhan Bingo, and I'm really thankful for that, and uh, the archive from museum, what they have, and then uh, try to uh, see if they are matching in in. Uh, in the field or, or how this is, is going to work is not very, sometimes not very easy task, but it is one of our duties. Um, if we go back to Hellenistic period, actually the uh, fortification walls on top of uh, Isartepe, which you can see uh, here also, are uh, from the Hellenistic period. These uh, city walls are uh, fortifying a settlement of uh, prox approximately 12, 12 hectares. And also uh, the gate of, uh, of the city wall uh, was excavated uh, during this Bingol excavations. And the Eastern gate and the walls of the monumental fortification tower were inherited. Uh, what we know from Hellenistic period is also the theater of the uh, of the settlement, not because only of its shape that is in the uh, uh, Greek theater type uh, built on a hillside, but also the stage of the, the uh, theater was excavated in 1993. And uh, from uh, Durmushkaya, uh, his publication, or his after his excavation in 1993, the, uh, we know that actually a, a, a fire uh, level was found, and this was dated to back uh, to the first century BC. 
So it seems like this, scene, this uh, theater scene was built in Hellenistic period or the theater itself, and then it was renewed or, or reused during uh, Roman Imperial period. So the uh, architectural parts were a PhD thesis of Owes Alp in 2006, and he dates this uh, all these um, architectural remains of, of, um, of the theater to second, third uh, century. Uh, this year we will continue to excavate the rest of this uh, scene uh, building because it's not excavated completely. You can also see here that is not completely excavated. I'm also think uh, I, I also want to mention our uh, Ari uh, Kai Browner who does all these beautiful uh, 3D uh, scans and 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 th uh, thank him for that in our team. Uh, so this. I want to also so the, this uh, semicircular uh, structure that came to the light, and you can even see it better in the uh, in, in the 3D um, plan. Or also uh, when you when we did a geophysical uh, survey here, that it, it seems to be a basin just in front of it. See, uh, can be. Uh, Compared to uh, to the southern uh, examples of uh, of Anatolia, like in Perge, a similar example of Nymphion built in same uh, maybe in the same period, because the Perge one is uh, dated to late Antoninus early Severian period. So this is maybe also an example that uh, Thalikia was uh, recalling from from Perge. Um, for the public buildings, we know more, not from excavations or not visible uh, monuments, but a lot is came to light with geophysical surveys. Since 2016, we conduct regularly uh, geophysical uh, uh, surveys uh, with uh, Thomas Schenk and uh, Avrim uh, Tutinsatar from uh, our PhD student in SDU and later on now also another uh, colleagues from SDU are uh, doing the uh, geophysical survey uh, since 2020. And we actually I have to say that it is very uh, successful, not always the uh, structures came so bright and in the light. So just at the uh, south of the hill, south uh, of uh, of Hisartepe Hill, structures came to light in uh, in in Seleukia that are uh, very much clear that they were uh, the public area. So we are in the public uh, public area of the settlement. Um, if we compare this uh, structure with Sagalasos size and 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 plan and and all the measurements are exactly the same of uh, Makelom of Sagalasos. Uh, also, the basilica at south of it is very close reminiscent of a transept uh, basilica in Sagalasos. So we know actually that south of, hill, uh, uh, of the hill of Hisartepe, we're all uh, full of um, public buildings. And this is what's also leading us uh, to the east, to the theater. So these are the structures. Here I just showed you, and then when you walk a little bit uh, to the to the north in the east part of the hill, you will reach the theater. Uh, necropolis areas are also known to us. Some of them, just because they are from the illegal excavations, are um, inherited, and we can see them. But in the northwest necropolis, uh, which is indicated with number five here has been excavated in 1993. And it's also uh, part of our um, other project that we are uh, doing in collaboration with Groningen University uh, to, under to try to understand the Roman imperial uh, burial customs and funerary rites in the, in the city itself and its environment. Uh, so we are dealing since 2017 in this necropolis intensively. 
And approximately uh, five hectare rocky area was used as a, a necropolis in, in the uh, northwest part of the, of the settlement. In general, the place where the head of the, uh, where, uh, they, they are actually uh, two types. So there are these uh, very simple cyst graves and uh, rarely they have a burial, uh, burial presence. If you lucky, you can find one or two coins uh, or uh, some personal belongings maybe. Uh, but the other type of the burial, which is also not rare, and there are many of them, are in a different plant, uh, a different carved or different plant chamber tones. And it seems like these chamber tones were used for a very long time in the, in the necropolis itself. So some of them has maybe uh, 12, some of them has nine, some of them and uh, even 19 uh, burials on top of each other. And uh, with the Sparta Museum excavations or, or uh, results or their uh, findings, we always thought that the cemetery was used between um, until fourth century, until this this grave came to light, and then we thought, ah, okay, now, uh, we know now that the cemetery was used until sixth, seventh century, actually, which is matches very well with our uh, pottery surveys that we don't find anything later than seventh century in in uh, on the hill itself. But uh, and some uh, ca uh, carbon dating uh, analysis made from some of the uh, from uh, two graves, and it turned out that actually these graves were used between eighth and and eleventh century as well. So how this uh, puzzle will be solved? Like we don't, it doesn't seem like we have a settlement in that period in uh, Hisar Tepe itself, but there are burials. Maybe it's a it's a, we should look for Agraya, which we don't know where it is. And maybe it has something with that other puzzle. So it is another um, question that we still need to, to answer. And not only uh, simple uh, cyst graves or chamber tombs found in Selekea, also uh, stone sarcophagi with this elaborate lids have been found or uh, this type of um, Ostotex, Ostotex also have been found, but they are not, uh, I cannot attach them to any uh, of the necropolises because they just were found uh, scattered and, and not uh, a lot in number, but it shows that the uh, rites or the use, the type of burials were uh, not only two. <laughs> yeah, so another, uh, area that we are dealing with because of the uh, sometimes the, the the finds brings brings you to to deal with one question or another right in this case actually we uh, definitely facing this from our surveys we have uh, found so many uh, production instruments that we started to deal with the production and economy of the city itself. Uh, one of them uh, is, the, uh, wine uh, is the wine presses that are scattered all over uh, the uh, rocky uh, Hisar Tepe hill and cut it into bedrock. So they have one collecting uh, pit on front of them and uh, a crashing basement is in many of them very well preserved. Uh, also, uh, they can be uh, dated to fifth to sixth century uh, from their findings. And I'd like to also show you on the map that we know now almost 24. This is uh, from 2018. Uh, Ahmed Murad added even more to them uh, these last two years. So uh, as far as I remember, there must be 24 wine presses uh, are existing in Selokea, waiting to clean them and to, uh, to study them. Uh, iron metallurgy is one of the uh, productions or um, econ economy that is related in Selokea Sidera. Uh, in Pisidia and its surroundings, iron production activities can, all, uh, can, can be attested from various settlements. 
Strabon actually gives information about the rich iron working of Kibera, so very close to Pisidia region. Archaeological finds from Kibera support the validity of Strabon's text. Traces of iron work were also found in uh, Antiochia, in Pisidia Antiochia here. Uh, one of the important center, centers actually of the Roman Imperial Army in Anatolia. And around Sagalassos, smelting slag dated to 6th to 7th century AD show clearly iron working activities and the archaeometrical analysis increase our knowledge for Pisidian mythology. Finally, surveys in Malos, Sandalion, Kapukaya, Prostana, and Bindos by Fikret Özcan and his team can be added to this list. So I'm very thankful for his sharing the information and uh, also giving comparison analysis to uh, fragments to us to, to be able to, to uh, start to uh, do the analysis in comparison and compare them. Seleucia Sidero should be also added to this list. In the sixth century, if you remember from my names list, uh, Hierakles names the city with Sidera uh, epithet, so iron in, uh, in Greek. Uh, this epithet must have been given to the city because it was known for its iron production activities. Also, as you know, very rarely Hephaestus occurs in coins, but in Sidera coins, there are uh, his depictions on the reverse side the, uh, as the god of blacksmiths. From our surveys, like, I don't know, maybe um, now uh, over a hundred kilo of um, uh, iron slags uh, came to, to light and we, uh, we started to collect them all. Uh, the, uh, the green parts show the uh, extensive surveys. And then we started to conduct an intensive surveys in the areas where uh, we can see from um, geophysics as well, these this, uh, black uh, points, I don't know if you see them in hope uh, maybe they are the, the uh, ovens or the, the, for, the, the, for the production. Uh, and there intensively when you survey, when we survey, not only iron slags, but also blacksmith um, rests are also coming, uh, can be also attested in these surveys. Uh, mortaria like this are very known in iron production centers. So we have also many of them, which I will show in, uh, in a minute. Uh, after the raw material comes to the, to the city, they will be crushed in these uh, mortars, and then they will go to the, to the uh, smelting, uh, to, the, to the ovens. And then you have a smelting slags, which we can find also in a huge amount. And then we have, of course, the blooms that they are uh, ready to be worked as a, uh, as an iron object. Uh, so these stages of iron working, you can find in Seleucia in many, many, with many, many examples in the city. And they show clearly that actually uh, uh, an effort was given in fifth and sixth century uh, for this iron uh, working in the, in the area. Yeah, these are the mortaria came through the uh, years uh, that we found through the years and also uh, these uh, uh, stones that they uh, used to crush the, uh, the iron uh, blocks or, or hematites uh, and then they go to the furnace. This year, I mean, last year, last summer, 2020, uh, 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 structure came to light from thanks to our geophysical uh, surveys where they show these black uh, spots. We found um, iron slags density, uh, a huge amount of them. Together this time, which is very important for us, an ostotec was used uh, for uh, as a pool of um, uh, for water to, after the um, after the process, uh, uh, so uh, cooling water um, uh, pools. We will continue with the, the excavation here this year and try to understand if this was really a blacksmith workshop 
and how it was functioned. All these I have to thank to uh, Henkel Foundation that is uh, a project uh, run by myself and uh, Thomas Schenk since three years. Uh, and uh, we hope very much to understand the uh, amount or, or the way of working iron, iron working in, in our city. More than, moreover, from the surveys, uh, also pottery uh, and roof tile uh, misfired uh, fragments came to light in uh, Seleke Sidera. So this is also a very, uh, another project is at the moment actually a PhD project of one of my students, Brock Sönmez, who is dealing with the production of, uh, of the pottery in Selekea Sidera. Uh, a group of uh, red uh, slipped uh, pottery found in, in the city, similar to the uh, Sagalasos red uh, wares uh, in, in terms of their typological features, and they have typologically consistent features. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, the uh, analysis shows that they are not from Segalassos, but they are from a different workshop. Either it is a Selekea workshop or a different workshop uh, in the region itself. But these examples that I show you today, they are uh, the common ware uh, pottery that is for, uh, for sure were produced in Selekea with huge amount. Uh, another uh, production area was in uh, southwest of the uh, Hisar Tepe hill and was excavated in 1993. So this is when I tell you that we try to combine the photo, the photo, photos or the plans with the finds that we have uh, together. And when we bring them together, we see that actually a, a bone tool workshop was uh, excavated back in 1993, and they found many of um, unworked bones, semi-worked ones, not completed examples, and in the city or in the necropolis itself, many examples that were, were uh, finished. And uh, most likely they belong to these two or three uh, bone workshops that they have been excavated. And again, a date of the pottery uh, brings us to fourth to fifth century AD. So it seems like Hisar Tepe uh, and its surrounding in, uh, was used as, as working workshops uh, area in, uh, in the late antiquity. How this functioned and how these uh, all uh, set, uh, the settlement shifted from uh, common building to these workshops still need to be, uh, of course, uh, explained and identified, but uh, we hope to do so in recent, in, in next years. And finally, um, stone quarry uh, uh, was found in, uh, in, in another hill very close to Selekia Sidera shows that actually some of the uh, building uh, or uh, were uh, using their uh, stones from a very close stone quarry in the city. Yeah, and finally, I'd like to come to our intangible cultural heritage of Sparta project. This is a project initiated in 2017, so we've been working on it since three and a half year or end of 2017, so 2018. Uh, the aim is actually to, to look at the cultural heritage of the region as a whole, not just like the period we are or our researchers are interested only, but in complete. And I have to say as a classical archeologist, I have learned a lot in the field, if, uh, when I'm doing this uh, surveys of intangible cultural heritage. And it brings a lot of uh, answers to our unknown questions uh, of our uh, period, actually. So what we do, we collect the, uh, this is one, there are several projects under this big umbrella. This is one of them. We collect uh, and interview 
uh, the area for the agricultural uh, and um, culinary um, traditions, right? So we just photograph everything, uh, put in database everything. We ask same questions to every every uh, person that we want to uh, interview. And most of the time we try to, to interview uh, people over 65. Uh, and most of the time we are still lucky because in uh, many projects in, of these, we, uh, we were able to uh, talk to people uh, around 90 even in the village. So we can gather more information. While doing that, also we, we check the whole um, uh, publications of uh, early uh, Republic period. There are local magazines like for Sparta Undargisse. This is really, it was very famous and very, very important. And they were always publishing a lot of, a lot of things in there. So we check all these things. And also like every excavation nowadays doing, we check the Ottoman period, late Ottoman period uh, sources. And then uh, combine them with the each project. This is uh, from uh, the the one at the left, the, at the right. This is in in Atabe, so it's just like twenty minute walk to our Seleukeia uh, Sidera. Uh, we <laughs> also uh, started to document all these mud brick houses, uh, but not only with their uh, walls and, and uh, how they were built and things like this, but as a whole, how uh, the living was uh, inside uh, a house uh, back then, which, which uh, areas they had, what common areas the family had, what was the private areas, where and how they were um, uh, collecting their uh, their uh, weeds and, and things like this. And another project is going on as a PhD by Okan uh, Oktemir is the, the burial customs of uh, Sparta. So what is he doing is collecting from late Ottoman period until today, the different villages customs because there are different um, beliefs in the in Sparta and in their villages itself. This is from Bayat, from uh, Kulen, where we uh, excavate very closely. Uh, so there are uh, he collects all the gravestones, the types, the typology he does, like just like we do in archaeology, but also interviews people for uh, understand their um, their uh, rights and how they do it. And, and it's very different in, in, from village to village and from uh, area to area, even in Sparta itself. So this is an ongoing other project under this. And like I promised, I come back to our lake. Um, we conducted also a, a survey uh, in the area this uh, we did actually this in last during the during the, the epidemic. So it was in uh, February, uh, March, February. Uh, today, when you go to the field, you will see that the lake is like this, and here is Seleukeia Sidera. Uh, we interviewed almost twenty five people between sixty five and eighty seven years old, and they um, some of them remember themselves, some of them. Uh, tell us uh, about their uh, childhood uh, memory about this uh, this lake, this Kuchukgöl, the small lake. Uh, actually, for and then we also searched for the uh, Ottoman period records, late nineteenth uh, century, uh, late twentieth century, and early Republic period. What they uh, were uh, dealing with is uh, is malaria. So it was not fun anymore in the last hundred years. And constantly letters were written to the authority where Sparta was belonging to Konya back then, uh, begging for uh, personnel and technical uh, personnel to come and, and stop this uh, matchy, uh, unneeded water and, and malaria and, and, and all this stuff. This thing. So this is now is coming in as a book chapter soon. I hope next year. 
and uh, also we uh, we search the old maps and one of them i just want to show you is keep keep out his his maps he always uh, sh he shows well our our lake actually is here huh? so it's it's is in here but from uh, the interviews and from Kiepert's map, we understand that the lake actually sometimes was dried up here, or when it was a huge amount of water, it was also uh, coming in uh, in the in the east part of uh, of the of the region of the area as well. But uh, the interviews. Uh, we said, okay, we're not going to show this to, to the person who is do, doing the survey. So he didn't know about the lake project at all at the beginning. And then I, we told him to start to just draw a map with the people he is interviewing and what they are telling him about the, water, about the lake, how it was and where it was. So approximately the same, same size or same um, areas that are affected uh, in the in the Holocene period, where what our our interviewers were also telling us, um, yeah, and this is Kulerne, the the uh, village that uh, looks to Seleukia Sidera, and uh, in 1953, and this is today. Because in 19, uh, end of 19, uh, after 1955, uh, in especially uh, beginning of 1960, uh, as you know, in Turkey, there was this big um, water, uh, uh, how do you call it, projects were going on. And one of them was not only bringing water, but one of them was also uh, to drying up this matchy area. So what they did, they opened big channels and completely dried the area. Uh, the match was, or the lake was completely gone. And today, if you go to this village, this is exactly the same area where it is uh, taken uh, from my student in uh, 2021, when he was doing this uh, interviews, you will see this area today like this. I'm very much thankful. I hope I didn't talk too long to my team, of course, and to the uh, institutions that are uh, giving us the uh, opportunity, the permit, and uh, supporting us with, uh, with finances and uh, to be able to do all this research. Thank you very much. Kapatima? Olur. Sen de gel. Bilge, thank you very much. Geldim a lot to think about and there's a lot of questions and um we'll get to the chat in a second i have a few questions as well so i'm just going to jump in with one of my questions yeah. and then yes we will get to all the i mean it's, this is you gave us so much to think about and i had no idea that this area was um producing such amazing material so you just the um the water uh project you were talking about um so the water was drained, right? I mean, you said with channels, because I worked in Haji Musalar in Elmala for a while, and the whole area was uh -huh. suffering from uh, this drainage problem um, that was started, initiated in the 1950s. And the water level yeah. had gone down incredible, even this was uh, in late 90s, early 2000s. Even then it was about 30, 35 meters below the surface. Um, do you know um, the water level? Uh, have you worked on that? What, what's going on with that in the area? Were you able to? Well, get uh, that? You mean for now, if they try yes, to get water? Yeah. In the, yeah. Um, it is actually coming in, in five or six meters, they tell us. Ah. Always. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Despite yeah. drainage. This is a very interesting area. This is combined with Eridir Lake as well. Uh -huh. Uh, so what they did, they completely dried up this region, the Kulerin region, for opening it to agricultural reasons, right? And then they didn't have water, so they started to bring water with channels or dig, dig again, uh, start to dig again wells uh, in the in the area. I like wells very much, especially the the modern ones. They either bring archaeological uh, strata or they show the, 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 the sediments of the region. 
Uh, and there are quite a lot of them. They are they are quite a lot of them in the region. Hmm. Yeah, very very interesting. Okay, well, Gölül Yalçın has um, several questions. Why don't we? Would you like to ask them yourselves, or would you like me to read them out? Unmute. You can unmute. Where well, it's not unmute. Okay. okay. Excellent. Uh, do ask please by question what you can read from okay. uh, the chats. It will be okay. Okay. So um, do you have some evidence for the so-called Akamenet pottery? I mean, the typical, typical shapes of this period. We have these so-called Akamenet bovals. Mm -hmm. We have some, yes. Uh, but not more than that. We have, uh, we can recall actually Akamenet period in the area, especially the two stelae with Antemia that I showed you. That's a completely different conference if I go in. That's why I was uh, just going very quickly with it. Uh, but pottery is only these, uh, no, uh, as of that types that we know from as Akhamenid uh, bowls. Typical, like in uh, Herge. Do you have some similarities? So we have, we have very rarely of that, very rarely of that, but we have uh, imitations of them. So they are not as like in Perge in a high quality. They are not in high quality. And no. you, you don't have any other shapes uh, of this period? Not yet. Only no. these bowls, not anything else? Um, no, only the stelae we know, we have. I see, thank you. So Gönül Hocam is also asking about, um, it seems that Seleukia Sideria um, uh, supplied other cities roundabout with productions like bones or iron uh, products, where the products were exported to. Uh, briefly, which ancient cities had demand about those products, and then Julian responded to that. Maybe you want to add this. Not necessarily self-sustaining with surplus um, for sale, classic Roman and medieval uh, economic setup. <laughs> Hello, Hello. Can, you, can you hear me? No. That's better with your that thing near your mouth. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, wait. Uh, no, don't wait. I, I, I use my children's apparatus. Uh, uh, um, please have to uh, uh, wait for a child to do it. You have a great helper. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now is better. Thank you very much. Right. How's that? It's uh, better. Uh, right. The, the, the point I... Arthur, how do I get rid of this? Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Uh, now, the point I wanted to make was that um, uh, what we have to be very careful of is that, of course, uh, all ancient cities and medieval cities and Roman cities was self-sustaining. Uh, there's always this argument about the Roman economy, in particular, which I'm interested in. Um, was it part of an import export business or what? So uh, 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 finding a lot of wine presses is interesting. Finding a lot of bone production is interesting. But when you look into um, you know, a place like Pompeii, which I'm very familiar with, uh, you've got wine presses within the town, as well as big wine manufacturers outside the town. So uh, a lot of it is for internal consumption. 
and I think we have to be very careful um, in, in trying to think that uh, any of these places were large production centres. Now, when we look at pottery, that's a different matter. Because, of course, pottery, we can identify sources. But even then, with, with pottery, we have this problem. The, the pottery is a pretty cheap <laughs> item. And it's not really worth your while to export pottery over a long distance unless you put it with something else. If you can actually identify things, now I, I realise the lecture did mention this, and quite rightly so, um, but you, you know, there may be iron work in there, there may be bone work in there, there may be pottery work in there, but a lot of this is for local consumption. Uh, when I want to go and buy a copper pan here in Ankara, where do I go to? I go to others. I find somebody who makes copper pans. They're not making them for export. It's just a, a very general comment, but I think we have to be very, all of us have to be very careful about thinking in terms of, wow, we've got this type of center and it goes out further. Uh, I have a rider. I'm sorry, I'm going on rather long. I've not talked to anybody for a while because I've been stuck at home with the kids <laughs> for a long time. Uh, um, but I'd be very interested to know about the wine presses. The, the pottery you showed with the first wine press slide looked to me to be uh, rather Julio Claudian Augustan in date. And I'd be very interested to see what type of counterweight stones that you had. That's all for now. Sorry if I've gone on too long. Bye. No problem at all. But um, can I say something also about this um, exchange change producing things? I, I didn't want to say this is a big city producing and exporting a lot. That was not my attempt. My um, attempt in, in the research of looking to the production, what they were producing, and this is what I said, actually, sometimes the, the findings brings you to that point. If you go to survey and find like kilos, kilograms and hundreds of kilograms of ore, then you have to deal with the mechanism, how it is working. And, or you have a box from museum that full of like unworked bonds, and then you have these photos and then you try to, to combine them. So for the pottery in, in uh, Selekia Sidera, we are very careful with that. We know that there is a type of pottery that was not produced in Perge, not produced in Sagalassos. I, may, I mentioned these two cities because uh, a lot of attempt made for the uh, comparison of the same uh, redware sweep uh, archaeometrical analysis, and they, were, they are also published. We know that this type of pottery in, in Seleukia Sidera uh, are not from, the, from here, but they belong to Poblomes. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, Frat, uh, when they uh, determine this type of production in Castidia as a coin. So we are, this belong to a, 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 this coin as a production. If they were produced in Seleuke Sidera, I cannot say that because we don't have the kilns yet. But they for sure produced local pottery, which is in every city that they do. Um, I don't know where they did it. I just have the misfired pottery. Um, for the iron working shop, that needs a very, uh, actually we need a professional hand in that, which I'm hoping very much to get this summer. Uh, this is, I also don't uh, a, a claim that they uh, exported iron objects to other, uh, to other Pisidian cities. My theory, which needs to be approved by, by a, a colleague who will be hopefully joining us soon, an expert in this, um, most likely this city produced iron, uh, uh, exported the iron ore itself. So they just pre-worked them and sent them away. That's why they gained this name of Sidera, Mm -hmm. especially in the 6th century onwards. But this is a theory, needs to be, needs to be uh, improved. Uh, when I come back to your question with the, with the presses, 
um, the pottery is from fifth century. Mm -hmm. The coin may be not matching, but the pottery is from fifth century. Was that the question? Am I wrong now? Do you ask me? Yokshay Julian Bay asked about okay, it. Okay, I see. <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay, the, um, uh, the, the pottery you showed first of all on the, the first wine press looked very Augustan, Julio Claudian to me. Red slipwares, not late red slipwares, but early red slipwares. And the Believe me, part, <laughs> yeah, and the the second part of my question was what type of counterweight stones were you finding? We have this huge, um, I didn't show them right here and I didn't have any, but we have this very huge uh, stone types. I don't know how to explain them. Maybe Ahmed can help here. Uh, and many of them, like not only one or two. The weight stones you mean, right? Yeah. Uh, the, thank you very much, Roger. Uh, thank you very much, Julian, and uh, for the conference. Uh, the counterweight stones, like the <clears throat> bell shaped, like the counterweight stones, for just the attached of the beam uh, installed to the fulcrum holes. Okay. Thank you. So, Lute has a question. She raised her hand. I do, yes. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for a wonderful uh, uh, lecture, first of all. Thank you. Good when to you, see you. Yeah. Well, a, my, my wife he was playing up at the uh, fire, was playing up at the beginning, so I missed the, the start, but um, I joined and managed to join later. I was, um, when you were talking about the presses, you were very sure that they were wine presses. Is that because it's too high for um, olive groves or does it have to do with the shape or do you have any information at all that shows why they are uh, wine presses? That's one. And secondly, are those presses, um, those installations, uh, were they covered or were they in open air? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think most of them were open air and the uh, olive presses are completely different in shape. You maybe remember we excavated, actually Elif Kuparal excavated and I was there then in that year's uh, olive oil workshop, right? So the installation of wine workshop is completely different than olive oil workshop. You need more, other more instructions for that, like crushing the olive itself. Uh, and that three pit that you um, separate water from olive. So not, it's not only because of the, of the shape, but there, the, the construction that needed for olive oil is not there. And also these fructum stones are very close and sometimes they are just inside of this uh, wine presses. Okay. And the size actually as well. Yes, Ahmed, if you want to say big, something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, may I? Uh, and also the, the, the sea level is the Selekes there is too high for uh, agriculture in the Olim. And, yeah, did it, uh, is it yeah. higher than Sagalassos? I don't no. know how high no, no. Sagalassos is. I no, I, I'm not sure. Well, I don't <laughs> say they don't have olive. I'm not sure about that. That can be that. And sometimes in micro uh, climas like in Sagalassos, but not on the top. It's in also a little bit in the valley, as far as I remember, where they found olive. Uh, but these examples are not in the shape of olive oil workshops, because for that you need. You don't have the grinder stones. You don't have the grinder stones. No, no, no. Right, none. Not the one. Great. No, it's very interesting that we don't have at all, actually. Yeah. Yes, and also the the wine presses should install it installated outside of the buildings because they need the the sunlight for vaporizing more water inside the wine before uh, because of the uh, fermentation process to uh, uh, accelerate the fermentation process. That's why uh, they should be the wine presses. Thank you. 
So Thank you. Can I ask something? Um, so, uh, so for uh, uh, wine production, I mean, it looks like I don't know the area, but Lutz and I were um, chatting <laughs> while you were talking. We have to come and visit hopefully this summer. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> yes. We have to see the site. I hope very much. <laughs> so um, so the site is on a rocky outcrop, it seems like. It's located on a rocky yes. outcrop. But, but then there are other hills around. So the wine production, do you think um, those were on the plain or were they using hillsides? Did you find any traces of um terraces or not yet not yet but uh, it's very interesting with the grape production and that we know from this our intangible um, project again that in late 19th century even or late 20 early 20th century the the area was uh, full of uh, wine yards hmm. and uh, they are not on the on the very very uh, high levels, and it's actually this this area is not comparing to PCD, other Pisidian cities is not very high. So it's thousand to thousand two hundred seventy, where we know settlements in Pisidia are in sixteen eighty or something like that, right? So the climate must have they have this um, in between of these rocks that they have some. Uh, mild climate for this kind of um, uh, productions. And it shouldn't be very far from the city where they had their wine yards. And, and the soil is vol volcanic, right? I mean, it probably it, is pretty good for wine. Yes. Wine yes. producing. Yeah. Because you were talking about a volcano in the area. Exactly. That volcano issue is another thing that we still need to, to completely understand because it seems to affect the, the, the area very much in terms of the climate, in terms of the um, tephra, it's tephra and everything, but we don't have any layer yet. So uh, only our... Uh, the 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 geography department our collaborators are giving us from their own drilling and their own um, mm -hmm. uh, analysis this information and but it's not far from from sparta so from and, uh, Gurdjik. and do you think um the iron sources were closer to the volcano area any um, on the sources of the iron well, we have in some of the surveys, I did, uh, it, it would be become very long, I didn't put it here. Uh, uh, in the, especially last year in uh, searching for these uh, sources, uh, we found some, some points where the hematite is like, like a mound there, like a huge amount of them. But if they were used, if they use that one, we really need to, to ask for a, a very good um, uh, specialist in that. As I said, this summer, I'm hoping very much that we will uh, have the chance to start to collaborate with him wow. in this aspect. But it seems like it is in this, if you agree with this, this like 10 kilometer territory, so it's easy to carry to raw material thing it is very in this uh, chamber and it's uh, not far from from sidera and it's like two different points with huge amount of him right uh, and we but we i have to really d d ask uh, or or I, I i wouldn't say for sure but most likely yes well Oh, Suna Hoca has a question. Buyurun Hoca. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, multifaceted, you know, project. Uh, it looks uh, very, very promising for the future. And thank the you. presentation too. Uh, I have uh, an architectural uh, question. Um, when you uh, mentioned that there are walls, uh, there are uh, gates, and then you mentioned uh, that there are, you know, public buildings. You mentioned the theater, and uh, there were these uh, basilicas. 
but for a site which seems to uh, go back to the uh, iron you know uh, age uh, is there no area that you can designate as religious i mean is there no evidence for a temenos or any religious architecture no temple anything like that at all there are some suspicious areas <laughs> that <laughs> it can be like that. Uh, actually, in 1993, when Orhanoja excavated there, he claims one of the Temenos walls as a, uh, as a uh, most likely temple. But this is, I didn't bring it here because I, uh, we need to really study it. it, it it's just one Temenos wall. Uh, but it's, it's on top of the hill, in the, on, on very top of the hill. Uh, and from the geophysics, it seems to be a, a huge area. So we need to, to investigate it, but much better to claim this. But there, are, there is this, this, uh, this area that Orhanu just says it must be a temple. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have one more question. Oh, Charles, go ahead. I asked too many questions. Oh, Julian has one too, but let's start with Charles. He raised his hand first. Well, okay. Yes, thank you for, uh, I too, uh, uh, thank you for this uh, interesting lecture. Uh, so my question is about, uh, have you identified any domestic areas, any houses, where did the people live? In west part of the Hisartepe hill, uh, not on the hill itself, but in the in the valley of that. Last year we started for first time on the geophysics, and there seems to be the the domestic areas. But we have like many excavations. This problem of uh, being uh, public site, not public site. There we are very limited in in our. Um, areas in excavation. So, as you know, we cannot uh, excavate if it's a private um, property. And most of the things for that is just with the geophysics and survey. That's why it is going. Actually, what I today showed you um, is more our questions, right? So, this is a this is the site. This is our research um, uh, questions, and it's just now two years or three years we are working there. But I hope to, to tell maybe more in the future about most of them. But for domestic areas, it seems to be at the west part of the, of the city. That's the geophysics. We are very lucky with the geophysic. It shows very clearly the, the structures. Julian, did you have a question? Yes, I did. It's architecture, actually, <laughs> this time. Um, it's been a fascinating talk. I've greatly enjoyed it. But um, apart from uh, the wine press, I was particularly interested in the identification of the Marcellum there, uh, because Marcellum-type buildings are not actually that common. You know, the square building, square yes. enclosure with a circular uh, proper thing in the center. They're, they're not as common as one might suspect. So I, I was really quite thrilled to see that. So um, thank you very much indeed for, for showing that. Thank you very much for the talk as a whole, but I, I, I did like that thank point you. in particular. Thank you. Um, this is one of the, our unfortunate, for example, that area is, is for now no go area for us for excavation. It's a private uh, thing. Well, this is sometimes a blessing, uh, so we don't have to deal with this big building, but sometimes it's also, you want to know how they will look like, yeah. So I have two questions quickly. Um, uh, one is, um, have you found any Cypriot pottery at all uh, there or? Very rare, no, 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 yeah. we don't have. Okay. Mm -mm. And another thing is um, how uh, you, you mentioned um, some Ill illegal excavations. Is that a big problem in the area? What's the state of um, illegal um, art, you know, excavation problem there? Well, um, I've, I've seen so many excavations and, and did so many surveys in the, in the site. Uh, this is 
uh, a question that everybody would answer with yes, I think. It is a problem. There are huge uh, attempts to, especially for the necropolis, to, the to excavate. Um, the, the, cham the chamber tombs, they, they are very, uh, they, they're lazy for that. They, they most of the time just go with that thing, the detector, the detector, what, how you call it in English. Um, and that's uh, with the cyst graves that, like last year, unfortunately, they, uh, they completely destroyed one. Um, it's very pity because they cannot find, I mean, uh, the, like you all know, the Roman uh, period graves are not uh, like uh, archaic period that you have many grave goods and everything in it. So there is even maybe one earring, a, a couple of earring, one earring, and then they don't find it. We find it by zipping the, the, the earth, yeah? But what they damage is, uh, if Paula is here and she's hearing me, our uh, PhD from Groningen who is doing the, uh, the bones of, of, uh, and the, the ritual rites in the in Seleucia, then you lose that information, how it was lying and how, and, and you know, all these very precious um, information about treatment of the body, uh, you lose that and that's very sad. I mean, it's really very, very sad. Yes, of course, it's a problem in, uh, yeah, she or she is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, any other? Like in, for example, in, sorry, um, for in one of the uh, hooks very close to us, that was in 2010. It's a hook identified by Ursaid in his 1980s, end of 1980s surveys, and it's not far from our site. During a survey, not during the excavation, it was in 2010 or 12, I think. They, they brought a bugger, like really a bugger, and just buggered out the whole uh, trench with that. And there, actually, you see that they completely destroyed a very high mud brick wall. So it's very sad. And you yeah. are you recording all this? You're recording whatever you can, right? Yeah. Yeah, we record. We record everything. I we record um, even uh, if we find a Coca Cola bottle from 1960, we record it. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, if not, um, we thank you very, very much. This I'm very thank. Very. Yeah. Uh, I mean, fascinating area, fascinating site. And now we will come and bother you there and ask our questions. Oh, oh you are most welcome. <laughs> Nothing to bother. <laughs> and it's very nice to see very uh, some faces that I haven't been since a very long time, like Reinhard Sanchez. <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Elif, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope to see you in person soon. Yeah. One way or the other, that. in Ankara, in Sparta. In Ankara. Then you coming with Lut uh, together to, to to visit us in Sidera. Thank you very much. And your <laughs> well. thank you. Great work. Bye. Okay. Bye everyone. Bye.